plants are life. They provide us with oxygen, food and medicine and have shaped our cultures and societies. And soon, they'll be going with us on a journey to deep space. Even before we had space stations in Earth's orbit, we sent seeds into space on rockets to test their ability to grow and survive in this extreme environment. Plants have also been sprouting on space stations since last century. Now that we're planning missions for people to go back to the moon and then go to Mars, we need to plan what they'll eat. We've been feeding astronauts on space stations for decades. Growing plants in space means that astronauts can experience different flavours, textures and meals. Leafy greens like lettuce and kale are regularly grown on the space station. This is horseradish, which is considered a pretty strong flavour on Earth. But because on the space station, astronauts can't smell or taste as much as on Earth, horseradish is pretty popular among astronauts. We're still learning about the best ways to grow plants in space. Rather than growing in soil like this, plants in space are grown in special media. The special design of media for plants in space helps to distribute water, nutrients and air in a healthy balance around the roots. Fertilisers like nitrogen, found in earth soil, are added to the water to grow plants in space. At the moment, the only pollinators in space are astronauts. Scientists, sometimes called astrobotanists, are researching how to grow plants in space. Hi, I'm Jenny and I'm a professor at the University of Adelaide and I study how plants can help humans survive on the surface of the Moon or Mars. Now this is duckweed. You might have seen it growing on the surface of freshwater around Australia, perhaps on the lakes and rivers near you. This plant may look small, but it is mighty. Duckweed, or Nemacea, consists of 36 different species, and they include the smallest flowering plants on the planet. Duckweed doubles in quantity every two days. This means it can be harvested regularly. We don't have to wait for it to flower and set seed, like other plants. You can eat the whole plant. It's full of protein and vitamins. We describe the taste as crunchy lettuce. Being able to eat the whole plant is important. This means there is less waste from the cycle of growing and harvesting the plant. In space, astronauts have to think about everything they're using and think about the waste at the end. Sustainability is also important here on Earth as we have limited resources too, although not as extreme as astronauts. One example of how our research can be used is growing plants in vertical farms locally rather than putting them out of season. My job is to use new technologies to redesign plants so they thrive in indoor environments and put all of their effort into growing. We can also make the duckweed taste more interesting. What would you like your duckweed to taste like? Think about the types of foods you'd miss if you were an astronaut. Perhaps you can leave us some suggestions. As well as providing nutrition, growing plants is good for astronauts' well-being. Flowers like zinnias, a type of daisy, have been nurtured by astronauts. Moon dust, also known as regolith, is too sharp for plant roots. So even when we grow plants on the surface of the moon or on Mars, they will need special habitats. These types of habitats are already used on Earth. You might know them as greenhouses or hydroponics. So no matter where we go, plants will be with us. Keep eating your greens. <laughs>